Hello, you wonderful people. In this video, we're going to take a look how to handle file upload in Next.js using server actions. There's many ways to handle the upload process from the backend, but the general idea is the same. We're going to make a request to an endpoint and upload our file. For my backend, I'm going to be using Strapi, a headless CMS that allows you to create an endpoint in minutes. And that's what we're going to use for this example. And of course, for the front end, as I mentioned, we are using Next.js and more importantly, it's gonna be beautified with Shatsian UI, which is an amazing library. So, and as always, you could find the repo to this code at this link here. So you could navigate there. Just look at the screen, boom, you got this. But without any ado, let's jump into the code and see how you can accomplish this. So first let's take the application for a spin. If I click upload, we're doing basic error handling. So it's saying an image has to be under five megabytes and I should probably have an image. So let me go ahead and select one here. Perfect, when I click open, now I have my image. Now when I click upload, unsuccessful upload, is gonna show our message and reset the form. If I take a look in Strapi, currently we just uploaded the file to the media library. So if I refresh here, you could see our file upload. But in Strapi or in your backend, you might have a, a content type like post and your post might have an image or a description and the URL. So you wanna be able to create an upload in a multi-part way. In Strapi, we break it down into parts. First, we upload the image. When we get the ID, then we create this post where we add the description and the URL. So taking a look here, we're gonna take a look at our multi-part. Again, we have some basic error handling. So let me upload the image. This is me playing chess against a baby monkey and winning, which is fantastic. If I don't add the description and click upload, it's gonna say, hey, description is still required. So go ahead, add a description. My last chest game. Now click upload and boom, everything is successful. Form is reset and back in Strapi. After we refresh our application here, you could see our upload, which has the image our description and our URL, and that image was also uploaded to our media folder, which is awesome. But Paul, why are you even showing us how to upload a file from Next.js from the front end? Because can't you just go ahead here inside the media folder and add a new asset, browse your files and upload a new file to Strapi. Yes, you can't. And that is the power of a headless CMS. You get to decide which parts you want your users to be able to manage from this amazing admin area that's going to be present, but you could also expose all these endpoints like we're doing here under roles public. If we take a look at our upload, we could expose our upload endpoints to allow you to add functionality where your users are able to upload images from their front end like we're doing in this Next.js project. And one of the reasons we do this is you might have Strapi as your main admin panel for you as the owner of the website, but you might expose different sections of the website on your Next.js front end and allow users to have certain access via the API, like uploading images or other things like this. And with that flexibility, you get a lot of power. For instance, in another video, I'm going to show you how I'm building an application where we are summarizing YouTube videos. And instead of having the user use the admin area, we're actually building the admin area ourselves in our Next.js application. By the way, you can find these videos on this exact channel that you're watching. And here you could find our Next.js Strapi 5 tutorials that we're currently in progress. But with that being said, let's jump into the code. Oh my God, this dude keeps blabbering. Finally, he's gonna show us the code. Oh my God. So here I am inside my Next.js project. If we navigate to our client folder, to our source and take a look in our app folder, in the page.tsx files, you're going to see our tab components from Shetsian UI, and we have two examples. Image upload simple, this is where we're going to start, and image upload multi-part. So let's take a look inside of our image upload simple form component. So let's navigate to components, go to forms, and open up image upload simple form. 
This form is responsible for getting our data from our image input and on form submit, firing our server action. Wait, what is he talking about? Let's take a look at this diagram. The basic flow is you have a form which will handle getting the inputs inside the form fields. And you can also show a nice message. Like in our case, we saw that we either had an error where we had to fill out a required field or a success message. Now, when we fire the server action, it calls our action. And that's where we decided to do our basic validation that we're going to take a look in just a moment. If we fail the validation, we use form state to go back into our form and say, hey, you did not complete all the fields. Let's try again. When we go to our action and all the validation is complete, we call our service, which in our case just submits the data to our endpoint, which is our Strapi instance. So now that we have this basic overview, let's take a look at the code. So our form, we have an action attribute that will fire our handle submit, which includes our action. If we navigate to the top, we are calling our form action and in React, we have this use form state method that allows you to point to your action and get the state back from your server action. And that's imported from React DOM from use form state. Since we're calling our upload image action, let's navigate to our data actions folder and take a look at our upload image. Just like I mentioned before in this diagram, when our action is called, we decided to do server-side validation, and this is where it's happening here. In our case, we're using Zod, and here we're defining the file schema and a basic check to check if our image fits our parameters that we set here. So when our action is fired, we pass form data, and we validate that data by first getting our image field from our form data, by use form data that get an image, which refers to our image. Then we are validating our schema. If our schema is not validated, we use the previous state, which comes from use form state in Next.js, and we're returning our data, including the error that says, hey, you submitted an invalid image file which is going to show this message. But if that message is not set, which we set it here above, we are going to return invalid image file. I would almost say that this is redundant. And to see this in action, when I don't select an image and click upload, here is our message that is sent. And now you know where it's coming from. It's coming from our validation here that we set up in Zod. Now, if we do add a proper image, click open. When we click upload, when our form fires our action and our action is called, it's going to go through this check. And if successful, it's going to ignore this if statement. And here we are taking our file and we're making a post request to our Strapi endpoint, passing in our image data. If something goes wrong, we throw fail to upload image. Otherwise, we take our data and we return it in our previous state. So back in our form, when we fire our handle submit, we do get that return from our action in that state attribute. So this is what we see here. And we are able to access our message attribute from state to say, hey, image was updated successfully. And that's exactly what we're doing here on the bottom where you see our message and we are destructuring our message, which is gonna be our message from action on success. And we're saying, hey, everything went well. So one more time to see this in action, we use our form to capture our data that we want to set. When we hit upload, it goes ahead, calls our action, and on success, we return this message. So again, back in our code, we capture our image data using our image input that we set to our form data from our state. We call our form action, our form action fires. We check our validation with Zod, if everything is successful, we ignore this and we go ahead, set our image to our form data and we make a call to our Strapi endpoint. On success, we go ahead and return everything. Otherwise, we throw an error. So now taking a look at our multi-part form. The process is the same. The only difference is that we have an additional field. In our action, we are checking two things. One, we're checking, are we passing a valid image? So let me make sure to add a valid image. 
And if I try to submit without adding the description, we are checking for the description. So I need to add so something here. Then when I click upload, everything submits successfully. And although you may think this will be much more complex, it really isn't because we're following that same pattern. We have our form, our form collects our data, then we submit our form, which triggers our server action where we do our validation. If everything is successful, we call our service, which we're gonna see in the next example. In the previous example, I didn't need to do it. I did everything within the action, but we could call a service, which will submit our data. So now let's take a look at our image upload multi-part form. Navigating to our form, it follows that similar format. We are using our use form state to be able to get the state from our action. We setting our initial state. And again, this code is available in the repo that I highlighted earlier, so feel free to pull. In our handle submit, if, if the image is selected, we add it to our form data. If you're probably wondering, well, how are you passing your description field to your form in this text area? Well, we're able to get access to it via this name attribute, which we'll see in just a moment. So when we click submit on our form or our button, it will call our handle submit function, which will go ahead and fire our form action. Again, we used use form state to point to our upload multi-part action to get back the form action that will have our state that we're able to get access via state prop here. So when we go to our upload image multi-part action, we are doing a similar thing where we're defining our schema in order to be able to validate our data. The only addition here is that we have this description field to check for our description. If I scroll down, notice here, we have access to our form data. Previously, we just got our image, but now that we have the description field, we are able to use that name attribute from the form and set it here. Same logic applies as before. We validate our fields. If there's any error, either the image is missing or the description is missing, we go ahead and return this error message saying, hey, you need to do something. And this is what happens when I click upload without adding any data. This check fails and triggers our errors that are coming from our side validation. For instance, a valid file must be an image under five megabytes and description is required. And that's exactly what we see here. Now, when we add our image and add some text and click upload, it goes ahead and uploads the image like we've seen before. So if we follow this code, that means that we didn't fail our validation and we broke it down into stop step process. I have this upload image service that you can find in services folder, look at upload image. What we're doing here is we're getting that image from our form data and we're making a post request to our Strapi endpoint. Once we return the data, I am taking the response from our upload image service. I'm getting the URL for the image and the image ID that we're using to set it to our relationship and our strappy as well as passing description. And this is our payload. Then we call our second service upload content, which is done right after our image upload has finished. And this will go ahead if we take a look inside of it. It's going to make a simple post request to our strappy endpoint and upload our image, description, and URL. So our basic payload. Once everything succeeds, there's no errors. We go ahead and return this message saying, hey, image uploaded successfully. If there's any errors that happen in this create content service, if we take a look inside here, you're like, hey, you're not throwing any errors here. Uh, what's going on? Well, if something breaks, if we take a look at this fetch API, I am throwing errors here and those will bubble up to the top that we are able to catch with Next.js error boundary using error component. But in our case, this works fine. So final recap, one, you need a form. Our form calls an action. We could use server-side validation inside our action. You might have multi-steps uh, that you created services for each individual step, for instance, upload file and then upload data to Strapi. So you could call that service from your action. If you're not doing too much logic, you could just stick it into action and just have something that looks like this. I hope you found this video useful. Today, we took a look how to handle simple or multi-part upload in Next.js and Strapi. If you have any questions, ask them in the comment or join us for open office hours Monday through Friday on Strapi's Discord. I always hang out there for fun at 12.30 p.m. CST time.
Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and found this example useful. Again, you could check out the link to the repo to see the example, play with it. Again, this is a basic implementation, but I hope it shows you how you can set up file upload with your Next.js project. And if you want to simplify the process of building full stack applications without having to start from scratch using Next.js and a headless CMS like Strapi is the way to go. And if you've been watching this channel, you know how much I love Strapi, a headless CMS. So that's not a surprise for all of you. But with that being said, thanks for checking it out. You could like, unlike, whatever you want to do. I'm going to continue making these videos because I actually learn stuff while I make them. So this is kind of cool. But with that being said, I'll catch you in the next video.